Vyekhutoria After the borders of the centralized Russian state had been drawn, many inquisitive people of the period began to wonder what was beyond the Ural Mountains. Little was then known of this vast land of forests, rivers, lakes, and swamps. Was it possible to establish towns there? It was only later, when exploration of these lands was underway, that it became clear that these lands were known to some, and in some cases already inhabited. Nevertheless, the entire Asian continent, from the Urals to the Pacific Ocean, were explored. The first Russian town to be built on the eastern slopes of the Urals, Berhuturia, appeared in the 16th century by order of Tsar Fyodor Ioannovich, son of the ill-famed Ivan the Terrible. The population of this town was never large, but it played a significant role for the local residents because it was the gateway to Siberia. There was another reason to consider Berkhoturia an important place. After its establishment, the town became one of the better known ecclesiastical centers, not only in the Ural region, but in Siberia as well, and later throughout Russia. After the town had been founded and a customs house established there, the monk Iona Prokofiev set off for Moscow with a petition to Tsar Boris Gudunov to grant him permission to build a monastery in the town. Permission was granted, and the monk received several icons and church plates as a gift. That was how the St. Nicholas Cloister in Virchoturia, which later became a monastery, began its existence. Nothing remains today of the original wooden church building or of the first citadel or Kremlin. However, a new cloister has been set up, the old monastery walls are being rebuilt, and the ancient churches are rising from the ruins. And, as in the days of old, pilgrims come hither. Today, we also see an increasing number of tourists in the town who come here to look at the specimens of ancient Russian ecclesiastical architecture. Verhuturia can be reached by both rail and automobile. There's also a special pilgrimage tour organized by the Ekaterinburg Diocese and various tourist bureaus. Tradition dictates that acquaintance with this museum town begins with the St. Nicholas Monastery, situated on a hill between two small tributaries of the Tura, the Kalachik and Sviaga. The building in the center is the Holy Cross Cathedral, it was built between 1905 and 1913, designed by the architect Alexander Tugivich, and consecrated in honor of 300 years of the Romanov dynasty. Its size is tremendous, it can hold over 10,000 people. The seven-domed cathedral sits on a foundation in the form of a cross and has three porticos. Four belfries surround the main dome on four corners. Two more belfries are on either side of the main entrance. Under the cornice of the cathedral, there is a quotation from the Holy Scriptures, which says, We bow to your cross, O Lord, and we glorify your holy resurrection. Next to the main assemblage of church buildings is a refectory with a gallery. There were over 60 icons here originally, but they were destroyed in the 1930s. The icons that we see now were made by modern icon painters. The most important relic of the Verhoturia Monastery, the remains of St. Simeon of Verhoturia, is in the Transfiguration Church next to the cathedral. St. Simeon was the first saint of the Urals. St. Simeon of Verhoturia was only recently canonized by the Russian Orthodox Church. His memory had been kept alive in the minds of people for over three centuries. Unfortunately, we know little of St. Simeon's life. Church chronicles state that the miracle maker from Vyachoturia was born at the end of the 16th century into a noble family from central Russia. It is believed that young Simeon left his home because his family perished in the period called the Troubled Times in Russian history. 
Having covered a great distance on foot, he found himself in Siberia, where he settled down in a village called Merkushinskoye, on the bank of the Tura River. He worked to support himself by fishing, teaching children, and making men's clothes. Since Simeon died in approximately 1642, when he was not yet 40, he was buried in Merkushinskoye in the graveyard of the church of Archangel Michael. Legend has it that 50 years later, a coffin appeared from under the ground, containing remains that had not decayed. By that time, the name of the righteous man had almost been erased from the memory of the local people. Numerous healings began to occur near the coffin of the saint, and news of the miracle of Vehurturia spread not only throughout the Urals, but throughout the whole of Russia as well. On September 12, 1704, the relic of Saint Simeon the Righteous was solemnly transferred to the Saint Nicholas Monastery in Verhurturia. The divine story of Saint Simeon the Righteous tells us of the miraculous healings of hundreds of pilgrims and parishioners. These stories were depicted on icons. Two icons of Saint Simeon the Righteous of Verhurturia, among others, accompanied the family of the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, on his exile to the Urals. Among the monastery buildings of interest is the stone wall of the monastery that was laid in the 1750s. The monastery walls were decorated with bifurcated merlons and connected the five towers of the fortress. When the monastery was constructed, the most important element of the wall was the main entrance, called the Holy Gateway. In a period of over a hundred years, however, it fell into decay and in 1856 a new gateway was erected in its place as part of the St. Simeon Aninsky Church. Its architectural style combines elements of classicism with the Russian Byzantine style of the latter half of the 19th century. Not long ago, St. Nicholas's Chapel was built in place of the old 18th century St. Nicholas Church. The new chapel was consecrated by Patriarch Alexei II in 2000. Beyond the monastery walls is the oldest of all the Verhurturia churches, the five-domed Holy Trinity Cathedral. It was built between 1703 and 1712, about the same time as the Stone Kremlin. The belfry, which according to Russian Orthodox canon, stands separately from the church, also served as a watchtower in the Kremlin wall. The cathedral and belfry were constructed by the best church builders of the time, the Masons of Solikomsk. Fragments of the Kremlin wall that once surrounded the Vyhurturia General's mansion can still be seen. In 1959, in accordance with the decision of the Hague Convention, the Holy Trinity Cathedral in Vyhurturia was included among the most outstanding architectural monuments of the world. Even today, the cathedral belfry is the highest building in Verhoturia. This vantage point provides a beautiful panorama of the entire town, the Tura River with its pedestrian bridge, and the St. Nicholas Monastery. In addition to St. Nicholas's Monastery for Men, Verhoturia also has the Intercession Convent for Women, which is located on the left bank of the Tura River. The architectural ensemble of the convent includes two churches of the intercession, one from the mid-18th century and the other from the early 20th century. The convent in Virchoturia is not as well known as the St. Nicholas Monastery, but its architecture is no less remarkable. Its founder, Mother Vasilisa, died several months before the convent was opened and willed that she be buried in the Holy Cross Cathedral graveyard. Her last will was fulfilled but the monastery tradition was broken. Now, her remains are buried next to the Father's Superior of the St. Nicholas Monastery. The monuments and historical places of Virhuturia have an interesting story to tell. People of all walks of life have wanted to come to this sacred place. Many a member of the Russian royal family have been to this place of worship, and the well-known Grigory Rasputin had planned to bring the sickly Tsarevich Alexei here. It so happened that Verhurturia has become the gateway to Siberia. The distance from Solikomsk to Verhurturia from the eastern slope of the Urals to the western is less than 300 kilometers. It was possible if one desired to cover the distance in five days, 
but it took four centuries for the first road to Siberia to be built through Virfuturia. If you happen to visit these places, you are certain to hear of the famous Babanovskaya Road, the first road to Siberia. The evil winds of anti-religious strife have long stopped blowing. The Verkhoturia monasteries are no longer victim to desecration and desolation, as when the local churches had served as penitentiaries for juveniles. Today, just as four centuries ago, the golden cupolas of Verkhoturia enticed the traveler to come and partake of the spiritual treasures of one of the most ancient sacred places in Russia.